Now, to perform in honor of our next inductee, Yusuf, please welcome a two-time Grammy-winning artist who has sold over 30 million albums worldwide, Dave Matthews. It's not time to make a change Just relax, take it easy You're still young, that's your fault There's so much you have to know Find a girl, settle down If you want, you can marry Look at me, I am old, but I'm happy I was once like you are now And I know that it's not easy To be calm When you found something going on But take your time Think a lot Why think of everything you've got For you will still be here tomorrow But your dreams may not How can I try to explain When I do it turns away again It's always been the same The same old story From the moment I could talk I was all I had to listen Now there's a way And I know that I have to go away I know I have to go Slowly, you're still young. That's your fault. There's so much you have to go through. To find a girl, settle down. If you want, you can marry. Look at me. I am old, but I'm happy. All the times that I've cried, keeping all the things. It's hard, but it's harder to ignore it If they will rise by degree But it's them they know, not me Now there's a way And I know that I have to go away I know I have to go Thank you, Kirkland. This is that's that was nerve wracking <laughs> in front of all of y'all. This is this is the kind of this is the kind of this is the kind of evening that makes me want to throw up on myself. <laughs> 
Um, but uh, but when I when I first heard about the opportunity to come here and do this, uh, I didn't even ask for any details because uh, I'm such an enormous fan of the of the man that wrote that song. And uh, so uh, when I was a kid, the thing I mean it's not uncommon in this room uh, that I love more than anything was listening to my records. And uh, I didn't want to be in Little League. I didn't want to play football. I just wanted to listen to my records. And I spent all my time on my couch or um, dancing around the room with the music as loud as my parents would let me turn it. My mother and I had gentle battles over whether we listened to classical music or rock and roll. Hmm. But, uh, uh, Something changed when I listened, when I first heard Cat Stevens' record, uh, Teaser and the Fire Cat. And, and uh, for one thing, my mother loved it too, so that was good. Oh, uh, uh, and uh, his music changed how I related to songs. It became a really personal, his songs felt like they belonged to me. Um, I'm lucky he didn't meet me then because I would have lost my mind. <laughs> um, he was to me sort of a reinvention, a reinvention a, it's like an evolution kind of exploded my mind. And I felt like it was possible to be a songwriter. Um, of course, I didn't realize at the time that that reinvention was also a key to Cat Stevens. Um, this was a man who'd already had a career writing bona fide pop songs like uh, First Cut is the Deepest and um, Here Comes My Baby. You know that song? That song. I was surprised when I found out that he wrote that song. I was really surprised, I've got to tell you. Um, um, but, uh, and that, that would have been the high, high point of a lot of uh, songwriters' careers. But for him, it was like just the beginning. Uh, his life was nearly cut short in 1969 when he contracted uh, tuberculosis and he spent a year recovering from that, exploring himself and exploring his songs. And he wrote some new songs and what came out of that year um, changed, uh, was a changed man and it would also change the history of music uh, as well as my life because he wrote all those great things. Cat Stevens signed to Island Records and put out a string of albums uh, that still hope, hold up as some of the best music ever written. Wild World, Father and Son, Peace Train. And, t and T for the Tillerman and Teaser and the Firecat and all those records. And he did all the cool covers too. He did all the artwork. Oh boy, I, I was real fired up when I found that out too because I was like, man, this is, he, he can't be stopped. He also... He also, uh, he also made me fall in love with art films because I watched the movie Harold and Maude because of his songs. And then I was like, wow, movies can be weird. <laughs> and that, 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 that helped me out a lot, too. That was a burst of creativity th through the 70s that, that any of us would envy. Um, but he sung his songs with, uh, with conviction. There was a sincerity that inspired uh, millions of people including me, and helped me sort of feel like it was okay to search for meaning in life. I don't know, does that sound silly, but it's true. The most inspirational aspect of this artist is that he never stopped searching. It was after this period of great songwriting that he confronted mortality again when he nearly drowned off the coast of California, and his faith was tested, and he converted to Islam and changed his na name to Yusuf, and uh, even for a man known for his reinvention of himself, this seemed, seemed pretty radical to a lot of people. Um, but he's now back performing, and you can hear him perform his classics as well as new music. And I'm no longer a kid sitting in my room listening to his records. We all get older, we all learn new things, and hopefully we grow. His music remains a testament to the growth and evolution that he's committed to. And now when I hear those songs and I think of the journey this man took through his life and through his music, I don't want to write songs like Cat Stevens. 
I think about what it would mean to live with the same relentless curiosity, conviction, and creativity. He is a teacher in the truest sense of the word. It is not only his music, but his entire life that we're here to honor. And a few have done with theirs on this earth as much as he has. I am proud for that reason. I am proud to induct Yusuf into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Good evening. Peace be with you. Well, this is, of course, a great honor. Uh, fantastic to have heard that I was accepted. Of course, it's been a journey um, to get here. And part of that journey, we've, we've heard it from Dave. Um, most of my songs were actually, well, after Here Comes My Baby. Um, or like uh, about the journey. And mainly because, of course, I was, I was on that journey myself. Um, but as a young man, you know, my first search was for wealth and success. And, uh, but then uh, I got almost dragged underground after, you know, the first battle with fame and uh, Faustian demands of the music business. Um, I was hospitalized with a thing called TB, but that was a great opening for me, a great chance. Um, and that's where my real journey uh, started. And that journey was to do with search for, for meaning. Um, so that kind of defined, I think, my main contribution to being a songwriter. And um, the road, that was my home. Um, of course, nothing, nothing of this was ever in my mind when I first began. Um, I got my first cheap guitar, you know, after hearing the Beatles. Oh, that's what I've got to do. And um, I never imagined that one day I'd be standing here and like watching Rogers Hammerstein. Oh, my God. 
you know, amongst this elite community of geniuses. Um, and so I just, you know, I did what came natural and I got paid very well. So anyway, my biggest fear was not finding the answers to my limited, or our limited mortality. You know, we are creatures, unlike animals, who have to live with the knowledge of our own mortality. And that presents great questions um, about what's beyond, you know, what's, what's over the rainbow. And um, that gave me courage to seek and, and to go places perhaps other people have never gone. I mean, um, I, hadn't, I hadn't heard of many that had gone through so many sort of borders, um, leaving my religious landscape and my cultural zone. You know, it was not difficult for me. For some reason, I had the courage to do that because I was so dedicated to this search. Anyway, so you can hear from, from the song like The Wind, you know, that's, that says it all. Songwriting is amazing. You know, how it happens, none of us really quite understand, but it enables you to draw on, on all sorts of life's possibilities in your imagination or coming from the real. And you're inspired. And when you are inspired, you become something of a medium which enables people to come together and share these stories and these feelings that reveal, you know, the highest peaks and the lowest and deepest, you know, cracks in our humanity. David talked about the time in Malibu and in the Pacific Ocean when I, when I faced my own weakness, the cracks in my own ability to do anything to save myself. And that's when I reached out to the ultimate presence for help. And that was all I needed to recognize that I couldn't live without divine help. That's a reality for all of us, actually. So, the journey, it was a beautiful saying by T.S. Eliot that um, says, we shall not cease our exploration until we reach where we started and know it for the first time. That's so right. Because it's to do with finding out who you are. Um, I'm really grateful to the power above us all for allowing me to travel such a distance, to find the doorway and to understand the purpose of that road. And I was even allowed to come back through that door, and, you know, write some more songs, and so I could sing and shake the hands of those people and those hearts to whom my songs spoke to. Thank you. Here's a new song. It kind of talks about how difficult it was to explain what I found. Town, long cape and hat. People stood and stared and closed their doors as he passed. He strolled the empty streets, kids banned on tin cans. Then the panting dogs began to bark as the road singer sang. 
Thank you so much. Peace be with you.